Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 122 of the podcast. It's the 2nd of May, 2018, as I record this intro. And this week on the podcast, I speak with Robin Bentley. Robin is an unschooling mom who loves dancing hula, playing the ukulele, and supporting her daughter's exploration of her interests and passions. We have a wonderful conversation about unschooling passions including how supporting our child's interests often ends up being a positive experience for us as well. Healing our own childhood, tips and ideas for supporting our child's interests, and even if we don't share them, and lots more. As a personal update this week, I'm working away at updates to my website and have added a new page with links to audio interviews I've done. It's fun to be the one answering questions about unschooling for a change. You can find the link to the collection if you hover over podcast in the menu and click on interviews I've done or go directly to the page at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash interviews. And as a community update, I want to thank everyone who has chosen to support my work on Patreon and a big warm welcome to new patrons, Mary Ellen Kujowski and Love Lilies. I deeply appreciate all my patrons and their generous support. It's vital to helping me share unschooling information and inspiration with everyone who wants to explore the fascinating world of unschooling. If you'd like to support my unschooling work like this podcast and my website, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash exploring unschooling. And don't forget, if you have an unschooling aha moment you'd like to share with our community of listeners, just go to the main podcast page on my website, livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast, and scroll down a bit until you see the microphone. Just plug in your mic and click the start recording button. I would love to hear your stories. And this week's quote is from Robin. She mentioned how actively supporting our children as they pursue their interests and passions can be a wonderful way to heal our own childhood. She said, One way to become supportive of your kid is thinking of how you would feel in that situation and what you would have liked your parents to do. You become the parent that you wish you had by supporting your kids. I love that. By putting ourselves in our children's shoes, Thinking about the ways we wish our parents had responded and supported us and embracing those feelings of love and support can help us make better choices with our own children and heal those wounds. I really love that image of being the parent you wish you had. And now with that, let's go to my interview with Robin. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca, and today I'm here with Robin Bentley. Hi, Robin. Hi, Pam. Hi. I have known Robin online for many years and am so excited to finally get to speak with her. I know we both... Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) I know we both share a love for supporting our children's interests and passions, so I'm really looking forward to swapping stories and sharing our thoughts about it all. And to get us started, Robin, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Okay, well, uh, we're Canadians. Um, uh, I was born in Victoria, Ross and, and Senna were both born in Vancouver, and we've been living in Washington State for the last 14 years. Um, we moved here because of Ross's work, and he's a former professional race car driver um, and currently coaches drivers and runs an all-things driving company. Um, I edit his stuff, <laughs> sometimes badly, but mostly <laughs> pretty good. I think. Um, and uh, I'm his sort of bounce things off of person. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Senna, she's 23 now, and so we're officially officially done the unschooling or homeschooling, unschooling. But uh, she's still with us, and she loves all things art and gaming and dressing up and um, yeah. So you know, here she is, and we're still <laughs> supporting her in many ways. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and I do tula and play the ukulele, and I sing with an unschooling parents rock band. Oh! Um, <laughs> I like to do. Oh, that's very fun. I did not know that bit. <laughs> uh, that came up sort of all by chance, the, the rock band thing. Yeah, very interesting. So at I'd a be conference, ke- actually. At, at a conference. Together. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's often how we meet up and connect, right? <laughs> Yeah, so no kidding. I'm curious to learn a little bit more about how you way back when discovered unschooling and what your family's move to unschooling looked like. Okay. Um, well, I guess it, it started when I was uh, um, a very new mom and I attended a La Leche League um, meeting and I got to know some of the um, the leaders, the my first leader and then the ones that I joined as a leader so I was a leader for a little while and they all unschooled their kids. And, uh, so through that and the folks that I, some of the moms that I met there, we, um, got in touch with the local unschooling group and they had meetings every month and singing days, which were a perfect place to get together and, and connect with people and do what we all love together and the kids could play or sing or whatever. And uh, they had gym days and, you know, just gatherings, basically, Um, sometimes classes and that sort of thing. So like pottery and it was sort of, you know, it was floating along a little bit like um, attachment parenting stuff. And then uh, around the time that Senna turned six and we were we were still in Canada at the time, I discovered um, always learning and the unschooling.com group and I started reading uh, Sandra Dodd and Pam Sarushin and Joyce Federal's writings and that's when it start. I really started to make the shift I think because I found that you know attachment parenting was a good starting place but it seemed uh, a little full of control to me after a while so having um, the experience of people who had uh, done, been there, done that, I guess, um, started me on that path. Oh, that's really interesting. So did you hear the term unschooling at the, the Lecce League and, and that area? Because I'm just wondering, how, how did you find um, unschooling online? Yes, that was, uh, they did talk about unschooling. Ah, cool. um, unschooling looked a little different, I think, compared to what I've learned for me anyway, Mm -hmm. uh, what it means. And um, I guess some of them would be relaxed homeschoolers, uh, eclectic homeschoolers, you know, sort of veering into unschooling. But I wouldn't have called it radical unschooling, perhaps. Maybe that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, let's see, I was on a couple of um, uh, Yahoo groups in Canada and that seemed to be more of a mix. It wasn't just unschoolers. And it was kind of all over the map. But, you know, um, I still have friends from those groups. And, you know, we may not do things exactly the same, but we uh, still put our kids sort of at the forefront. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And you connect. Yeah. You connect over the things that you connect with, right? You don't need well, somebody, one person to be everything, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I think about with uh, kids' interests and, you know, people who want to try to put their kids together because they're unschoolers. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it's better if they have something that connects them that they're both interested in, you know. Oh, let's meet some unschoolers. Well, some of those unschoolers, they may never see anything in common. So... I mean, yeah, I'm especially right now, but yeah, no, yeah. no, it's a great point though, because, um, you, I find that it, that 
finding other unschoolers is actually a better connection for the parents because for the parents, unschooling is an interest, whereas exactly. for the children, it's just what they're living. Right? Yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, it's just what they're doing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. And that leads us very nicely into the next question, because <laughs> I'm curious to hear that we're going to dive right in now what your daughter's interests are. And I'd love to hear about how you're supporting her as she pursues okay. them. Let's go. Well, <laughs> Her interests currently are um, digital art, which she uh, does, her, um, and mostly, uh, you know, she's done a lot of art for herself, but now she's doing commissions for people. Um, she's been a gamer for a long time. Um, she uh, started mostly with Pokemon and a DS, and that went into World of Warcraft and uh, Guild Wars and a bunch of other things online. Um, of course, she loves cosplay, and uh, we like to go to conventions together. So, um, no, she didn't start with all those things. Um, she had sort of all sorts of passions when she was really young. Um, she loved horses, and she loved riding, and for many years that's what she did. And then all of a sudden... She was done. Um, it, the horses started to scare her a little more, and it was more uncomfortable for her to be around them. So she was happy to let that go. I wasn't so sure I was happy to let it go because <laughs> I really, it, you know, she she was really good at it. And um, but she lost her teacher. She lost her horse. And I think that made a, a big difference to her. So, you know, having a connection with the right instructor and the right animal really made a difference to her. And so if that wasn't there, then she was kind of done. So that was one thing. Um, she did a lot of uh, um, crafting in clay, uh, Pokemon, um, World of Warcraft characters, that sort of thing, but mostly Pokemon. And she hasn't done that in a long time, but she draws them now. So that's... That's how that shifted. Um, you know, she liked to collect things. She wasn't a Pokemon card player, but man, does she have a lot of Pokemon cards. <laughs> she liked them for the art. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's one of the things we have boxes and boxes of, and she'll take them with her whenever she goes. And, uh, you know, she really liked the CSI movies uh, or the, the TV show at one time. So we started a collection of that and we had, um, you know, family members, you know, buy her a season or whatever. So she's got that to take with her somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the uh, things I love, right? Because when you look back, it's when you look back that you can see the threads and the connections that run through so much of it. Like you mentioned how her heart, her art um, you know, shifted from clay, from sculpture yep. into digital drawing, yeah. Yeah. probably had like a, a, a paper kind of drawing stage and then into yeah, digital. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, yep. you, you know, horses, animals into Pokemon and games. Like you can see how all of it kind of feeds each, each other thing, right? Exactly. You know, and she, at one time she was into warrior cats and the books, mm -hmm. and she'd draw those, and uh, um, yeah, all all the animal stuff. That's how she actually. Uh, one of the ways she learned to read, um, to her satisfaction. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what she made that's the point the of saying that. Yeah, uh, was through zoo, plain zoo tycoon, and yeah. um, she said, "When I could read reticulated giraffe, I knew I was reading." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I knew she was reading before that, but. You know, it was up to her to make that decision about yeah. whether she was reading to her satisfaction. So, yeah, all the animal stuff has, you know, now it, it's Pokemon. It's all the animals that she has in her games. You know, she's when when she plays World of Warcraft, she has pets and, you know, it's all of a piece. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> and now she owns little ratties. She's ah. a rat I have rat grandbabies. Oh, that's so cool. They're so cute. <laughs> I know. I think that's something that I find so fascinating. You know, now we've got older kids now, right? My kids are in their, all in their 20s now as well. And looking back and seeing um, so many things that they did and how they were connected. Like I remember when Lissy was, you know, 
12, 13, she was really interested in going to shows, going to concerts. Right. Right. But but she preferred to call them shows, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that was that was something that took me a little bit to um, get comfortable with because that wasn't an environment in which I was naturally comfortable. Mm-hmm. But my goodness, um, looking back now, that was it's such a valuable just piece of her experience. Right. Because, I mean, she met. Well, that was the other piece is is um, my my contribution was really driving her to shows. And and at first I was staying at the shows, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that she knew I was there in case she was uncomfortable. But eventually I started enjoying them so much that I also I enjoyed going in with her. Right. Right. But, you know, so we would be going to one, two, three shows a month. But, you know, it's not that these were expensive things. She wanted to go to these alternative shows in clubs, you know, so right. the tickets were like 10, 10 bucks or something. Yeah. Um, but I had so much fun supporting her eventually, you know, seeing her joy. But then now when I look back, I see that, you know, at one of the shows we were at, um, we, the girl that opened for her mentioned mm-hmm. that she was from New York and this was right before Lissy was moving to New York. And I oh, said, Hey, right. why don't you, you know, email her and say, you're going to be there. And they ended up meeting for coffee and they became really good friends. That's so cool. <laughs> and Lissy's actually in New York and uh, in New York. Um, so her friend Kara moved to LA and now Lissy stays with her when she goes out to LA and she shot her um, album cover. And, nice. and, you know, now Lissy has discovered that she loves with her photography. She loves working with musicians And now look at all these connections from, you know, 10 years ago in her life. Now she knows so much about about those shows and connect can connect with musicians on that level while she works with them in her photography. Right. So that's so cool. You just have no idea. You You have no idea. Exactly. Support them with what they're drawn to. And and you're just creating this foundation of life for them, right? That they can draw from and connect. And I think that's the hardest part at first is because you never know. Yeah. And if you're expecting some sort of reward or (laughs) some sort of positive immediate outcome from this, you know, to see something out of it. That that misses the point because it can be a decade later, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. How it's it's real easy when you think of supporting your child's interest to think, well, if I support them doing this, then maybe they'll be that when exactly. they get older. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I'll give them I'll give them uh, access to animals, and we can have animals, and like we can go volunteer at the vet, and then maybe they'll become a vet. Yeah, and yeah. you you overlay this. Thing thing on them that they have what you know they might be interested in that but it it puts a lot of pressure on on a person to say okay this is the path you're going to take and we just really have no idea even the ones that actually we've you know when uh, parents have set their children on a path it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stay on it anyway I was listening to a thing on CBC the other day how this the family wanted their daughter to become a lawyer and she went through university. Uh, she got a really good job with an oil and gas company. Then she quit and became a comedian, a stand up mm. comedian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I go, okay. Her <laughs> parents yeah. were very happy about that, but they're, <laughs> they're okay with it now. <laughs> but yeah, but once we really sense, are, you know, whatever, yeah. I think, I think, uh, or, and, and Lissy's case, you support them where they are now. Yeah. Because you don't know how that's going to turn out at the end and what you've got is right now. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it's, 
I think it, it's a big, it's a, it's a shift that I found with, um, part as part of my de-schooling, really, if you want to talk mm-hmm. about it that way, is losing that expectation that, you know, this is going to turn into something that, because that something is our conventional expectation. We're still looking for that productivity piece. We're still right. looking for things to, to be quote, good, you know what I mean? That yeah. that everything we do needs to be an investment in our future. No. Yeah. You know, but to to realize just the value in that moment of supporting your child as they're pursuing they, their interests and passions and just letting your effort reflect that, that love yeah. for them, that support for them. And yeah. for me, you know what it turned into? It just turned into curiosity, right? Right back to the roots of unschooling, just mm-hmm. being curious as, exactly. you know, how someday might this weave in? Because when you look back, you can see how so much of it has woven together, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, oh, I, you know oh, what? I want to hear are one we of your stories. I, I know. <laughs> I want to hear one of your stories about, uh, I, I shared a, a Lissy story. I've got other stories too, but um, what's something that you've enjoyed uh, supporting your daughter? And I guess we can tie that into the next question too um, about how, how have you found the things that you're doing to support your daughter um, ending up being positive experiences for you? Right. Um, I guess the thing uh, sort of that I think about the most is uh, Senna's gaming. Now, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a gamer. Um, I did try to play World of Warcraft. I find because I'm old, um, mm-hmm. that that I get kind of queasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> in the um, so I wanted to learn about it without having to play it. So I would talk with her, or, you know, let her tell me her stories about what was going on. Um, I'd read. Um, they have some lore books, you know, some uh, you know uh, paperback books about the stories mm-hmm. about World of Warcraft. Um, I'd get the um, the manual, like the uh, the game, I don't know, game manual. Like strategy guide. Yeah, the strategy like guide. I couldn't think of yeah. the word. Um, <laughs> and, and look through that and sort of try to understand from that point of view. And I just listened a lot mm-hmm. and, and, and did a little research on my own. And the same with, um, you know, uh, she sort of branched off into more DS gaming with like Japanese um, uh, games, uh, Fire Emblem in particular, which we've talked about. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and then I could take it to a uh, starting with World of Warcraft and Pokemon. I could take it to a, a place where I was able to support her and even be a little bit a part of it since I wasn't a gamer. And that was with the cosplay. So making costumes or having costumes made, going to conventions, uh, reading about the games or have asking her to, to tell me about them or sitting and watching her play um, all connected us in a way that I didn't expect to have happen. Um, so I found my way to support her that I also enjoyed. And uh, I've learned a lot through that. It's uh, it's been a really good journey, and we're still cosplaying together, which is kind of fun. Oh, that's awesome! I know that was you know when I mentioned um, going to a lot of shows before, and at first I was going to support her, but then yes, you go through this process where you realize what value it holds for you. Yeah, as well, and because you know what, it would have been perfectly fine. If I eventually we were both comfortable and I dropped her off, you know, that would that would have been fine. Yet I found through the experience that we had so many deeper connections. I enjoyed watching. um, I enjoyed learning the music and the bands Mm -hmm. and we would listen to the bands as we were driving around town to whatever, whatever. Right. right? So I I enjoyed the music. I enjoyed seeing because these were alternative, uh, you know, young adult 
bands, right? Yes. So they were doing something they were passionate about. And to stand there and just watch them, you know, they're now freed from high school and they're touring, you know, <laughs> in the back of a van. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And they're just so passionate about what they're doing. They're just so excited to be up there. And it was just so much fun to see them. That's cool. And then she'd be, you know, in the mosh pit and I'd be further back and we'd see different things and we'd have long Mm -hmm. conversations in the car on the drive home. You know, you just you as you were mentioning with the cosplay, you find so often things that you enjoy as well. You can make that shift from I'm doing it for them to this is something we're enjoying together. Right. Yeah, exactly. And um. I was thinking how if I didn't uh, be involved or find a way to be involved in what she loved, then there were there would be things that I've learned I would have learned nothing about, mm-hmm. like like oh, constructing costumes, which I'm still learning and probably will continue <laughs> to learn. It's not as easy. I, I didn't <laughs> realize how difficult it was to make a costume from someone's uh, art because you can do anything with your art art. And then when you try to construct it, you go, that doesn't even make sense. (laughs) (laughs) So it's, it's a, it's a puzzle. It's almost like an engineering puzzle, which uh, kind of appeals to me. Um, And so, yeah, you watching those bands and going, you know, I never would have gone or listened to them if I wasn't with my daughter. So uh, you know, with uh, we go to the Seattle uh, SakuraCon each year. It's the Japanese anime convention. Lots of art and lots of cosplay, lots of panels, that kind of thing. And, you know, even I, in that case, I had sort of expectations of what she wanted to do. You know, mm-hmm. do you want to go to the, the panel on Pokemon? And she'd go, nah, <laughs> I just want to go look. I want to go talk to the artists. Oh, okay. You know, I just want to walk around in my cosplay. Okay, I want to be part of the photo shoot. Great. You know, and so she meets people and that sort of thing, but not doing the things that other people do. She has her own way of doing it. So I went, cool. So I volunteered officially this year for SakuraCon, which was a little bit different for me to see it from the other side, because I'm always a volunteer wherever I go. So um, I got to be with them, uh, she and her friends, and, uh, and also do my own thing. That's Just pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's what it comes down to, right? They connecting with them through their interests and passions, um, for lack of a better word, embiggens our life. Embiggens, right? yes. <laughs> I love that my, word. I know. My world is so much bigger for having or and continue to living with them right and i mean we share the things that we're interested in as well mm-hmm. um and all our lives are bigger because we're living together it's just uh it's that shift from from us and them to together us together does, yeah. does that make sense that yeah makes sense? and yeah. you know it makes me teary to think of, of you know um our lives are bigger because of w- you know, being with our being kids with and yep. helping them with what they love. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm fanning that... myself. You can't see it, but here I am doing it. <laughs> I have goosebumps. That's my typical reaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads again nicely to our next question. So I, I was hoping you could share some tips and ideas for unschooling parents looking to support their child's interests. Well, let's see. I think I kind of want to sing this little ditty that I've got in my in my presentation that I did at a conference, oh, cool. and uh, it's it's a little <laughs> video. Can I sing it? Yeah, sure. It's okay to not like things. It's okay, but don't be a dick about it. It's okay to not like things. Don't be a dick about the things you don't like. <laughs> That's by Michael Aranda. I will credit him because he was the, he did the uh, original music and words and video, I think. <laughs> um, it's just you got to find a way to support your kids, even if you don't like something that or you can't you can't initially find something to like about what they're doing. Um, my friend Jenny, uh, her daughter, 
um, Luna was very much into horror stuff and Jenny was not. Mm -hmm. And, and it took her a long time. She, 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 you know, gave Luna a lot of tools like makeup and, uh, taking her places where she could, uh, explore that, like, you know, Halloween fun houses kind of thing. And she watched, um, uh, TV shows and movies with her. And she said, you know, I needed kind of to get over some of that to be able to connect with my kid. So sometimes you have to get over your own bad self um, to uh, really support your kids. Because what they see in it, you have to see what they see in it, not what you see. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you come with your own baggage about stuff, and they don't. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's a curious, being curious piece. For me, it's curious to know what they what they find interesting. That's what started my like way back when we first began unschooling and Joseph really enjoyed video games. Mm -hmm. You know, the choice was, okay, do I try to control this or be curious about what he loves? And and I I spent a few months and oh, my gosh, you know, it opened my eyes. And and there we were. I found ways to support him. I found I enjoyed his love of that. Mm -hmm. But only because I was curious to stretch my own comfort zones, right? And learn more. Same with Mike with karate and, yeah. you know, Lissy with the bands. All all that kind of stuff, right? It, it's pretty freeing to be able to do it. And um, the other, there's another piece that I think sometimes gets missed is healing your own childhood. Because mm. a lot of us, come, the baggage that we come with is being told that what we loved wasn't important. What our parents wanted us to do was more important. They couldn't find a way to um, uh, support or like what we were doing. And so we come into parenthood with those overlays, like you're not good enough, that isn't good enough, blah, blah, blah. So one way to uh, become um, supportive of your kid is thinking of, how you would feel in that situation and what you would have liked your parents to do. So you become the parent that you wish you had Mm -hmm. by supporting your kids. Yeah, that's a great way to to think about it. Um, Because so often that that really helped me just putting putting myself in their shoes, I mean, that that helps from one perspective, right? It's mm-hmm. Like, if I was me, if I was that child in that position, right? Yeah. How would that feel for me? Yeah. And then, because then there's the other side where um, when you're, when I'm trying to help them um, explore uh, different paths, trying to help them even brainstorm different paths. At that Mm -hmm. point, I don't, I don't want to put me in their shoes. I want to try and see it through their eyes because they would have different goals. Like if I put myself in their shoes, I would have certain goals and certain things I would be wanting to do. Right. Like you said, when she showed up, you know, when you went to that conference and she wanted to do this, this and this, whereas, you know, you thought she would do this, want Mm -hmm. to do X, Y and Z, because that's us seeing through our filters. Right. Exactly. You know, I wanted to go to the panels. Well, in fact, sometimes I did. (laughs) (laughs) I did. Uh, yeah, it makes uh, such a big difference. It's it's tricky those expectations. Um, I know. You know, and if you think back to your own childhood, what your expectation or what the expectations your parents had for you, and how that turned out, mm-hmm. um, you can sort of take a different path. Uh, there was there's one thing that's uh, been on my fridge for a long time since it was made into a magnet, but it's always been in the back of my head, and that was something that Sandra said. Um, if your child is more important than your vision of your child, life becomes easier. And so instead of laying those uh, expectations on them and what you think they should be or should have been or, you know, will be in the future, if you get rid of that and see them right now for who they are, then it is easier. It really, really is. And and for me, it's that curiosity piece. Be curious as who they really are, right? I'm glad you keep bringing that curiosity <laughs> piece up because that's exactly what it is and I haven't articulated the curiosity part and so if I ever do a presentation again that's going in there 
<laughs> it's it's like my I, I don't know it just keeps popping up for me because that is the thing that always helps me move forward in any situation you know especially when I need to or or I'm looking to stretch my comfort zones and yeah. I'm not quite ready yet right yeah what where's my discomfort coming from and and why aren't they uncomfortable uh-huh and Funny, that's huh? where the curiosity. How curious comes in, is right? that? <laughs> why are you not uncomfortable in this? You know, why do you want to go in that mosh pit with all those people? Yeah, you like, know, ew. five years older than you, <laughs> who are gonna be banging around. And why do you want to crowd surf and you know all the? <laughs> but oh my gosh, it was it was an amazing has been an amazing experience for her and. And again, threads into all the things that she does. It's become part of her. And when our children are curious about something, their interest, their passion, and maybe we don't understand why, and maybe they can't articulate why, but if it's something they're drawn to, there is this little thread reaching out, right? That just wants to make a connection, even if nobody knows quite what it is yet. And it's just so fun to, to help them explore that, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, I'm trying to think of any other tips and ideas. Oh, um, I was thinking about hmm, when you were talking about when they when a parent doesn't share that interest yet. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's really helpful to um, to bring. It's not like we're sublimating ourselves and and doing this because we should or because no. it's expected, right? It's bringing ourselves to it. So, like you were talking about, you know, not um, being able to actively gain mm-hmm. besides Senna, but finding out other ways that mesh with you and how you like to learn things and reading strategy guides and mm-hmm. like that was something I loved doing and supporting Joseph with was when he was trying to beat a boss or or find the last key or whatever. Yep. I I would be, you know, on the internet reading through the walkthroughs and shouting out ideas. Well, did you try this? How about this? You yeah. Know? And and helping out that that was a way I could be helpful. Exactly. Right? And, and and in the connections and the trust and the relationship that's built out of that Mm -hmm. is it's it's priceless yeah it it really is that's what life's built on those i know those everyday moments (laughs) yep well you know in the cosplay part i mean i've been a dress-up kind of girl since i was little Mm-hmm. So that completely appeals to me in all ways. You know, uh, it's another thing about dancing hula costumes, <laughs> and makeup, and all that stuff. So, well, and then, OK, so speaking of stories like that, like uh, Michael and his karate. Right. Yeah. So at first, that was just nothing that had ever been on our <laughs> radar when he first expressed an interest. Right. So I had no clue. You know, I didn't know. I didn't even know they were called dojos back then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I realized one shift for me was I realized, okay, I wasn't trying to find the best dojo. I didn't need to understand karate mm. from the get-go. I just was needing to find a place um, that connected for Michael. Exactly. A place that, that worked for him. It wasn't about finding the best place and then having Michael fit in. It was knowing Michael, which I did, and then finding a dojo that meshed well for him, right? Yeah, that's and, that's what we did when uh, Asena did Aikido. Same thing. Mm-hmm. We needed a dojo and a, and a sensei that fit with her. Exactly. And then as I got to know it, I came to... And his training, you know, he started once a week. As he got more comfortable, he added another class, another right. class. And, you know, after six months, he was going um, three times a week. And then <laughs> eventually he was going, you know, five times a week in tournaments and all this stuff. And I realized how connected it was when I was growing up and taking ballet. Yeah. And, you know, 
the same it you know the whole same approach um to the physicality Mm -hmm. of it Mm -hmm. even though they looked very different that was a connection that we had that was um that was really deep you know that was the root of the joy of doing something physical like that you know and that was something that I did, um, you know, most nights for many years and performed and all that kind of stuff. So it it was really cool to find that. Oh, bet. Yeah. But you, you know, like we said all the time, you don't know that when you start out. No. Are we all going to say it? Be curious. Just keep going, right? (laughs) It's true. It's true. That's awesome. Okay. So we probably, um, covered most of that. I think people understand how excited we are about yeah, exactly. <laughs> helping our children um, follow their interests. And I think that's one of the big things is, you know, at first it was, okay, I'm supporting them. I'm supporting them. But as we were talking about throughout so much of this, um, after a few times you see these valuable connections mm-hmm. play out with our kids, right? Yep. And, and once you've internalized that, <clears throat> it's n- no longer is it about, oh, I need, I want to support their interests. It's just your relationship and supporting your child, right? Exactly. Yeah. That whole piece of supporting their interests and passions falls away because you're just engaging with your child and helping them do the things they aspire to do. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's about about the relationship you forge through that, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's what I think of uh, unschooling as it's not about academics, but it's about relationship, yeah. um, you know, and allowing, I mean, I think of unschooling as allowing her to learn what she needs to learn and wants to learn in her own time. So part of my uh, role as an unschooling parent is to support her to do that and forge that connection uh, as we go. So we still Mm -hmm. have that connection even at 23. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) when you're helping them and supporting them, pursuing the things that they want to do, that whole, you know, teenage rebellion, you know, strained Mm -hmm. young adult relationships that it just was not my experience at all. Was it yours? Uh, No. Um, I mean, we've had uh, some difficulties just, you know, um, people living together, people do, people do, not just parent and child, but no, not, not that kind of thing. And, you know, I know some people have more trouble um, with it than others. And part of that is, uh, you know, de-schooling oneself to, Mm -hmm. um, you know, shift your, your focus and your vision of what life should look like. Um, I mean, that's why we always talk about that expectation piece, yeah. right? Because it's hard. Mm-hmm. That's a hard shift. Yeah, it is. to Yeah, to realize, you know, that this other person has their life to live. And and without our, ex, our overlay of expectations, letting, allowing them and help, actively helping them explore the things that interest and fascinate them is how they're going to learn the most about themselves yeah. and about how they mesh with the world. Exactly. Right? Think yeah. of all the things that we've had to overcome ourselves um, mm-hmm. because, well, you know, we internalize some expectations and ways of being throughout our lives. Um, and sometimes it takes until you get to be quite a bit older to realize Hey, maybe things could have been different. Yeah. And and I sort of hope that if nothing else by doing things a little bit different, maybe she won't have that long a time to figure out if that was the right thing for her. Um, you know, she's already on the right path for her. And mm-hmm. she's not going to have to go, "Oh my god, I've just wasted my life." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's it. You know, we all change paths, Mm -hmm. right? But our, our, with unschooling, our children have grown up doing that already. Exactly. So it's not like I know when I left my work, 
my career as an engineer, right? Mm -hmm. That was a big decision. And a huge part of it was, you know, the expectation piece, the who am I without this, because this is what was expected, and I achieved it. Yep. Right? Uh, Who will I be without it? But our, our kids, we're helping them know and understand who they are so that when they shift, they're they're more comfortable because they they know that shifts come. Like, right. you know, as you've talked about how Santa's interests have changed over the years mm-hmm. and, and how they've grown and morph. And I mean, when I look back, I can find the threads of what I enjoy sure. about all those different things. Um, but the shifts were so much bigger because there were that where was that overlay of expectation yeah. on it, yeah. right? And and that conventional, those conventional expectations of, you know, career and achievement and 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 then me having to question, is that who I really, you know, want to be yeah. in the long term? Do you want to be a human being or you want to be a human doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, and, you're, yeah, when your identity is tied up with the thing that you do as opposed to the person things. you are, it can be really tricky. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And it's not like it's, uh, you know, you, you don't want to leave the impression that these are easy things for unschooling kids. Oh, gosh. And it's like, you know, oh, la, 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 la. No, absolutely not. But they they have an understanding of themselves and how they tick and 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 ways to navigate their experiences that I did not have until, I don't know, <laughs> my 30s, 40s. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the other thing they know is that they can come to us, you know, yes. with their troubles, uh, yeah. with their ideas, with their, um, you know, with anything they want to talk about. I mean, my kid doesn't talk a lot, but when she's ready to and when she has something that she needs to say, she knows she can come to me. You know, mm-hmm. she's she says, I'm squad mom, you know, because I'm sort of mom to all her friends, uh, most of who are yeah. not unschooled. And, yeah. you know they could come to me too. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's worth it for, for that, that she can do that and come to me if she needs to, even at, you know, as she becomes a young adult. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I love my mom. I loved her dearly, but there were things I would not be able to come and talk to her about Mm -hmm. just because of that separation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is something I wanted to mention, um, because, uh, you know, for us, we had the resources to support Sen. I mean, her the things that she did did not they were not cheap, necessarily. And Mm -hmm. I know not everybody has the finances to, you know, give their kids everything they need, at least not right away. So, Mm -hmm. you know, strategies for for uh, um, doing that, if if, you know, make a list uh, get families involved, you know, your extended family to, you know, uh, gifts, um, try to find cheaper ways of doing what it is that, that your kid wants to do and just take them seriously. Um, so, you know, it's a huge piece. Sometimes it looks really easy for someone like us to, to, uh, facilitate and when when finances are tricky, then it, it seems a lot harder. But there are ways of doing it, at least um, emotionally, if not physically right at the moment. Absolutely. And I think that that was something that I did a lot when you I love the word facilitate, <clears throat> because sometimes even it's like a an exchange of services, mm-hmm. you know, like you were talking about volunteering yeah. and, and so often there are, um, we often jump to the first, the, the first is, you know, go get the class, yep. you know, join, join the team, yep. you know, whatever, whatever. Um, but number one, if, if finances are an issue, there are so many other ways to come at it. And, and number two, that might not even be um, the, quote, best way for your child to engage in it, mm-hmm. certainly up front, right? You know, yeah. maybe they truly do just want to go to the park and kick the ball around. Yeah. You know, or see, watch YouTube videos of karate moves and play with that. Mm-hmm. 
You know, there's so many ways to to try things out and to get a taste and and to get some experience um, before you make the bigger. So so you know, it's not oh, can we sign him up for soccer uh-huh. or he doesn't get to do soccer at all? Right. There are more you know, more ways to approach it. So many, and more yeah, ways. it takes a while uh, for most of us who have been to school or yeah. taken classes to to think outside of that class situation or that team situation that there are other ways to get these things because that's sort of we thought oh I need to take a class uh, yeah yeah that. and 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 the conventional guilt of of not yep. Being able to afford it and yeah. and that shuts us down, yeah. that fear and that disappointment, whatever. But that's about us again, uh, right? Uh, and that's our work to work through. Isn't that usually the way, though? It's it's uh, kind of our work to do throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and we talk about de-schooling never ends in that we always find pockets of these conventional beliefs that... Um, shut us down for a while the school and de-schooling never ends yep yep that's awesome okay okay we better get to the last question oh, okay. here <laughs> okay what's been your favorite thing about choosing unschooling so far so far well now because so i guess we're both officially not unschooling anymore we're living life but i mean after after a few months a year or two of unschooling that's what we were doing right living yeah. life my favorite thing, hmm, I guess I now know that people can learn um, just fine without school and, in fact, blossom in different ways that, you know, school maybe doesn't or schooling um, mindset doesn't allow. Um, and I think th- the ultimate favorite thing is that um, we still have a really good relationship at, at you know, her at 23. Um, yeah. And I think it's not about, I think I said this before, it's not about the academics, about, it's about the relationship that we have. Mm-hmm. And I'm still learning what I can do better. Um, but... Yeah, I guess it it comes down to the relationship. Yeah, uh, I I that's that's been my experience as well because the relationships are what last a lifetime. Exactly. Oh, see, school is just this little this little piece. Yeah, <laughs> it's a blip. You know, yeah. No one, uh, when when you get to but be it, thirty, no one asks you what uh, high. Well, they might ask you what high school you went to, <laughs> but they don't ask you what your grades were. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that's gone. What are you doing yeah. now? And, Who are you now? And you you learn that you learn so quickly that they can learn easily yes. without school. Yeah. Right. So yes, then it becomes about life and about relationships, and that this is just that's just life, and and those relationships that you develop are are for your lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. Supporting your children's interests facilitates that, and you being curious about what they're doing. <laughs> She pulls it all together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, oh, Robin. I had great. so much fun. We should talk more yeah. often. I think we should. <laughs> now, bef- before we go, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Um, I'm on Facebook as Robin Ehulani Bentley. Um, that's my hula name. It uh-huh. means heavenly redhead. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm a moderator on Sandra Dodd's Radical Unschooling Info, so you can find me there. Um, I'm also on My Unschooler is Interested in uh-huh. Facebook. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a great resource yep. for this, too. Just just for creative ideas, brainstorming different ways Absolutely. to uh, yep. pursue an interest, right? Yeah. No, that's uh, awesome. Now, I'm on I'm on Twitter and Instagram, but I not there very often, but if you want my my handles, I can give you those too. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll get them from you, and I will put all that stuff in the show notes. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Have a great day. You too, Pam. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. 
You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to check out the second book in my Living Joyfully with Unschooling series, Free to Live, Create a Thriving Unschooling Home. In it, I dive into the four characteristics that I found helped unschooling flourish in our home. Curiosity, patience, strong relationships, and trust. One reviewer wrote, Really enjoyed this short and sweet book. It has marvelous one-liners, and though I'm not an underliner, I found myself underlining on every page. Another said, I believe it would benefit any homeschooler or parent to read this book as it re-emphasizes the importance of the relationship between a parent and a child in the learning process. I plan to reread this book. It is rich and full of gems. Give yourself some time to absorb it before rushing into unschooling. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.